Hey class, so I'm here to show you how to make your prints for watercolor mono printing. And I wanted you to see the printing setup. I've got my tray of water here. My water's been soaking. Periodically, you want to push your paper down just to make sure it's completely submerged. You only want to soak your printing paper, like the Stonehenge paper. If you bought the Sumi paper, that rice paper, uh, we're not going to put that in the water because it would it would disintegrate but you still do need to have some water available for that type of paper all right so soaking you can soak your stonehenge or soak a sheet of sketchbook paper but if you're printing with the sumi rice paper keep that out of the water for now i've got a piece of tracing paper that i'm going to use for printing and i've also got a spoon the last thing I have over here is just a kitchen towel that I've folded and we're going to use this for blotting the water out of your paper. Alright, so I've got my two different prints here and I would suggest since you have to let them dry overnight and the printing is so fast that you set up a couple of these and make a couple different sketches and just experiment. This one on the left, I had a piece of tracing paper. I traced a bird from my sketchbook, slid it under the saran wrap and used that as a guide. Over here on this image, this was more free form. I was just doodling, thinking about pattern. If you notice behind the moons and these little hatch marks, it looks like there's a tone, like a greenish brownish tone. Last night I had painted a rainbow and then a blue sky and I didn't like it, so I took a paper towel and I started to wipe it away, which is one of the pluses uh, or the advantages of working with this material. You can reuse it. But when I wiped it away, I noticed that the paint, while it was picking up, right, the image disappeared, the paint was still on the surface. And when those rainbow colors all mixed, it made this nice brown. So I wiped it. I cleaned off the edges and I let some of that dirty paint water sit on the surface. So that's what's creating this tone. Uh, and we're gonna see how, how it prints. All right, so we're gonna do this in real time so you can see how quick it is and you can see the results. So the first thing I'm gonna do, taking my heavy paper out of the water, this is just a sheet of Stonehenge. I'm holding it by the corner, let the water drip off. Place it into your dish towel and just smooth over it once or twice. You don't want to push down hard. You don't want to blot it too much. The paper still needs to be moist so that it will reactivate the dried watercolor. And the watercolor will release from the saran wrap and go onto your paper. So I put the paper down. I'm going to lay my tracing paper over top. And I just smooth over it to get the paper to stick to the saran wrap. That'll keep it from moving so much. And I've got a spoon, just a regular spoon. Put two fingers in it. You're gonna use this to exert pressure on the surface. Now the reason you've got the tracing paper over top of your damp sheet of paper is because as you're moving across with the spoon, you're pushing down pretty hard. I'm exerting a good bit of pressure. And if I were just on the damp paper by itself, I would end up abrading the paper or you know, wearing a little hole in it. So the tracing paper, it allows your spoon to glide across and it keeps you from making a hole in the paper. Forgot I had something way up here in the corner. Now, if you noticed, I kept my non-printing hand uh, planted on the back of the print just to make sure the paper doesn't move at all. Before I lift it up completely, I just want to peek and see if there are any areas where maybe I didn't, oh no, where maybe I didn't press hard enough. But it looks like all of the paint released. Now this is an experiment and one thing that happened when I was blotting, I blotted the top of the paper enough, but there must have just been a couple of droplets left on the bottom of the paper, which caused the bird and the moon to disintegrate. So that was not on purpose, but it actually looks pretty interesting. So I'm going to hang on to this.
but if you look back at my image, we can see a ghost of what I had painted there, and of course now you can see my drawing. So I can create this image again. That's why it's called a mono print. Mono means one, print means multiple originals. So each one, you can repeat it, right? Because we have a matrix, but each one's gonna vary slightly, and that's where the mono comes in. So hopefully on my next one, I'll be able to keep the lines nice and crisp. This actually looks very much like a touche drawing on a lithograph, which is a planographic process. So we're getting results with super low tech supplies that look like we had access to you know, chemicals and limestones and really fancy printing presses in a studio. All right, so I'm gonna make my second print. I'm gonna blot my paper a little bit more. Notice how I went over it smoothly instead of just one, two, three. And we'll see the difference this makes. I'm gonna print this small section down here. I like this process because it, it allows you to experiment and play around and have fun. And the prints are made really quite quickly. Now, when you're pushing down on the surface, Sometimes you can go back and forth, but you should always alternate between back and forth and little circles just to make sure you don't end up with lines in the print and that you're making contact with all areas of the image. So when I lift this up, notice how the moons look a little fuzzy and you can still see a lot of the paint on the surface. I'm just gonna lay my paper back down, drop it back down, and I'm gonna go over those areas just a little bit more. So that's why it helps to keep your non-printing hand holding down the paper so that you have the ability to do that. All right. So on this particular print, these little green spots, these were the pan water colors and I did some areas where I just dropped it down with a lot of water just to see what would happen. The black that you see, those were, uh, that was the tube watercolor. All right, and last but not least, I wanna show you how to print using the rice paper. Now, if you have a spray, a little spray bottle, that would work to actually spritz this paper. I don't have one handy, so I'm going to just do a quick dunk in the water. You don't wanna soak this type of paper. Okay, so I submerge it, I pull it out, and I blot it. Since the paper is much thinner, it will have the propensity to just fall apart in the water. It didn't feel damp enough. I think I blotted it too much. I'm just gonna dip it one more time You don't want the paper to be dripping. You don't want it to look shiny, but you don't want it to feel dry. Okay, that's better. I'm gonna drop the paper down. The cool thing about printing with this Sumi paper uh, is that you can actually see your image showing through the back. So remember, this is the image where I had that background tone where I tried to wipe away another painting that I had made. And as I said before, this process, it's all about experimentation. So make, you know, as many prints as you want to until you get the desired results. It's really important if you are printing with that Sumi paper that you use a piece of tracing paper between your spoon and the printing paper because that paper, it will sort of fall apart. All right, so that's actually a pretty decent impression. There's still quite a bit of paint on the surface, but if you look at this moon, it looks pretty solid. I actually built up that watercolor a little bit more on the surface. I painted it last night, let it dry, and then this morning I did another layer of the tube watercolor on top because I wanted it to be nice and dark. There are areas where I didn't quite pick up all that tone, what we would call plate tone. And it's called plate tone because usually you would have a plate, like a little metal plate 
or some surface that you're printing from that holds value. So we've created the illusion of plate tone with saran wrap and watercolor. It's pretty incredible. All right. So in just a few minutes, we were able to make three prints. We got varying results. I'm actually the happiest with this final print that we did where I accidentally created this mess of brown on the surface and I decided to leave that and work with it. There's lots of different ways to create your images and to make marks. So if you do decide to try this process, you know, don't be afraid to experiment. Take down a few, a few little working areas of saran wrap and try out different things on each one. And if you don't like the image, you don't have to let it dry and print it. You can simply dampen a paper towel or a rag, wipe it away, dry it off, and start painting again. All right, that's it.